You what? Pejito! In the latest episode of Dragon Ball Super Vegeta, the prince of all Saiyans, displays impressive ferocity, impressive power, and he is the first dude in the entire tournament of power to make Jiren the Great. Not Jiren the Grey, Jiren the Great Sweat. What? what? That sounds weird, obviously, because I'm talking about one grown man making another grown man sweat. <laughs> oh no! 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 It does sound just a wee little bit off, but that's the reality of the matter. After Jiren fought against Vegeta in this episode, Jiren needed a towel. Albeit small towel, but still, it's, but still a towel. When the tournament first starts off, I highly doubt a lot of folks thought that the first person to make Jiren require a towel would be Vegeta. But Vegeta, whoa, very impressive stuff. And also, I gotta say, there are a lot of things in this episode that I do want to talk about, but I don't want to fit it all in one video. So I'm gonna spend the next few days talking about more Dragon Ball Super stuff. I, I guarantee you that. So without further ado, let us get into the rigmaroles of this episode of Dragon Ball Super. First and foremost, in stellar Dragon Ball fashion, five minutes at the beginning, five minutes of just pure stare off. Maybe five minutes is an exaggeration, but there was a lot of stare off time. From the first minutes of the episode, then we cut over to the bench and you have the Grand Priest, he shrinks the bench and everyone's shocked. And then we go back over to Universe 11 and Universe 7 and the stare off continues. Only this time, you have Goku and Jiren walking towards each other for another stare-off. I'm like, what in five minutes of just stare-off? And at the end of it, it's just Goku looking big, really big. Mm, Jiren, extra thick. Okay. My body is thick and bodacious. Why is Jiren so thick? Jesus Christ. Too much, way too much with Jiren. I love Jiren. <laughs> I love Jiren, baby. But from a pacing standpoint at the beginning, it was cool, but also kind of off. When you have a stare-off scene to start the episode, bench stuff, then another stare-off scene, walk toward each other for another stare-off scene, looking all thick. It was hype, yes, but uh. But then after that, you have Goku power up. Honestly, I thought that he was going to unleash like some Super Saiyan Blue, Super Saiyan 2 transmission because Vegeta's sweating as he's looking looking at Goku power up. And then you have yellow electricity when he's doing that. And I'm like, hold on, wait, is Goku about to unleash something brand spanking new? I wasn't too sure. I really wasn't. Because again, Vegeta's sweating. I'm like, oh, wait, hold on. And then you have Jiren like, rah, rah. and you have the electricity. I'm like, is something new about to happen? No, no. But Toei hyped the living hell out of them. Like what? But no, no mas. Then after that, Goku and Jiren begin to fight. And you could tell two things from this, but we're not too sure which one. Either number one, Goku has gone way more powerful in Super Saiyan blue form compared to when he first fought against Jiren, cause he's just fending off his attacks quite easily. And or number two, Jiren got that much weaker. But honestly, I'm gonna save the Jiren getting weaker thing for a whole nother video. Goku and Jiren fight each other. Goku's doing fairly well compared to when he first fought against Jiren in Super Saiyan Blue form. Actually very calm and casual. And they're talking about getting stronger. And essentially the dialogue is kind of weird because Goku says at the beginning of the dialogue that he has no idea why he wants to get stronger, but he wants to get stronger anyway. And then Jiren says, well, I want to see what lies beyond stronger. And then Goku says, well, so do I. But my like, wait a second, hold on. But you said that you didn't know why 
What? Hold on. So, it's kind of iffy with the dialogue, but essentially speaking, both Goku and Jiren want to find out what lies beyond that strength, what lies beyond getting stronger. Now, moving on to the next thing. I did not expect Frieza to fight Dispo one-on-one. -on -one. That apparently is going down. And then you have Topo against 17 and Gohan. So in hindsight, it makes sense, the matchups. So initially, when I saw the preview of episode 122 last week, or no, two weeks ago, I did not expect Frieza to fight one-on-one -on -one against Dispo, who claims to be the fastest man among all of the multiverse, at least from a combat speed standpoint. And so far, that has proven to be the case. So how Frieza is going to deal with Dispo in a one-on-one, -on -one, I'm not too sure, but Frieza is fairly intelligent, so he's going to outwit him somehow, some way. I don't doubt that. But I expected it to be more so a 2v3, where it was Gohan, 18, and Frieza against Topo and Dispo. Not separate Frieza and Dispo entirely. Now, the next thing, when we have some fighting between Goku and Jiren, in steps in Vegeta. And so it becomes a two-on-one Goku and Vegeta against Jiren the Great. And then let's keep it real here. It is Jiren the Great, baby. Jiren. Great. Too good. Oh my goodness. But Jiren, he does like. <laughs> like the way Toy animated it, it really reminded me of like the classic Gear 2 Luffy Galley. <laughs> like the way he did it. I was like, huh. Did they just. <laughs> Did they just snag that from One Piece? All right. After some back and forth between Vegeta and Goku and Jiren, Jiren hits Goku with the volley of attacks, and Goku gets slammed by it. And Vegeta, he sees the volley of attacks. And then a minute or so later, after Jiren does like the Mario spin, and he sends Vegeta flying, Vegeta comes back at him again, and then he does the same volley of attacks, but Vegeta dodges it. So Vegeta was perceiving the volley of attacks that Jiren did against Goku, and he's able to adapt and learn the pattern that Jiren was striking at. He's able to weave in there, and then hit Jiren right in the gut. That was a powerful punch. Boom. I'm like, ooh, okay. You what? Vegeta. Oh, shit. But I do wonder, was that same volley of fists the same one we saw previously when he first used it against Goku, where it's almost like instantly? <gasps> Because I'm not too sure. Because I think Piccolo kind of noted that it was the same volley of a fist. But in the previous episodes, it was very fast. So I'm not too sure if they were the same. But I think it's heavily implied that it is the same volley of fist. And so let's say it's not an animation style difference between what we saw previously and what we see now. Because this episode was animated predominantly by the Takahashi team. I believe so. So if it's not because of the animation style then was it done on purpose to show that Jiren has gotten weaker compared to his previous form? I'm not too sure, but think about it. Now, after Vegeta hits Jiren with that major punch in the gut, we cut over to the second part of the episode. The first half of the episode, from the standpoint of animation, is okay. It's not fantastic. It was overall, I would say, okay, okay plus. The second half of the episode animation-wise, whoa, I mean, Wow, because it's not necessarily dynamic. No, 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 but it's heavy impact. The animation is fluid and the shading, the shading was, it was on point because you can see the intensity of the characters and what's going on. And there's one scene in particular that was very well animated. Again, not that dynamic, seriously, but the impact, the shading, the fluidity, it was there. So Toei were clearly saving most of their budget for the second half of the episode. And that's when Vegeta begins his onslaught. Yeah. Non-stop volley, 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 and continues the barrage of fist. And Jiren has to block, he's forced back. Again, he's sweating. And Jiren the Grey wasn't sweating at anything before. And then it all ends with Vegeta dashing behind Jiren. Jiren going for like a backwards forearm, and then Vegeta kicking him hard in the gut. <sighs> but then that's when Jiren gets his second wind, and yeah, <laughs> that's when Jiren's like, no, 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 I've had enough. I'm tired of this. No more towel. Take the towel. Put in the corner. We're done. Jiren, 
<laughs> he runs through that like, yeah, get out of here. And proceeds to dominate. And then hits Vegeta with a big energy wave. And it sends Vegeta flying for a long time. Like, I'm pretty sure you guys noticed that. He got sent flying for quite a bit of time. And of course, that's because of the animation and how they pace the episode as a whole. It really amplified the moment. Definitely. Again, this comes down to the Takashi team. Because he was being sent packing for a long time via the energy wave, and you're worried if Vegeta's gonna fall off the ring or not, and he's struggling, he's like, ah, ah. The impact was there. And then after we see Vegeta ride that way for quite a bit of time, we cut over, and then there's a big explosion. Actually, no, there's two explosions, which I think indicates that Vegeta offset the momentum of the energy wave via his own key blast. I'm not too sure if we can actually confirm that or not. But there's one explosion, and then after that, like a second later, we see another yellow explosion. But then afterwards, we see what's going down with the side battles. And Frieza, fairly confident. This was doing a lot of after images around Frieza, but Frieza's seen this trick before. Not a big deal. Behind him, in comes Dispo for an energy ball. No. Frieza, tail. No, no, no. Please. Please, young buck. I know. But Dispo turns the tables. This tail is giving me two. So Dispo right now clearly winning. Then we have Topo. And this was, I think, one of the best animated scenes in the entire episode. Topo initially pushes back Gohan. And Topo laughing confidently. Ha ha ha. But so you have Young Buck, please. In comes 17 to distract Topo. As he was distracted, he turns around. It was very smooth too, the way he turns back towards Gohan. And Gohan is cogging back for the Kamehameha. He hits it. The Topo. <sighs> Justice! No, he's like, that's not enough at all. He lands on the ground, and this shading was excellent. That's what I mean when I mean the shading and the impact. Because the shading was so good for the vast majority of the second half of the episode, the impact was off the charts when it came to the characters and their expressions. Whether it was Belmod, whether it was Beerus, whether it was Vegeta, Topo, Goku, it was there. You can feel the intensity. Gohan too. Gohan had it quite a bit. The intensity was there. And Topo is the prime example of that. And that segment of the episode, I think, was probably like the second best animated part of the episode. Definitely. And honestly, it's a damn shame because I know that upcoming episodes will not have that quality of animation. For ongoing anime, they lack consistency when it comes to animation, for the most part. And Dragon Ball Super is no exception. But then we continue, where you have some more interaction on the bench. And the bench stuff I did like as a whole. Beerus talking to Supreme Kai of Universe 11, saying, you're playing it cool, you're playing it too chill. Then you have Belmont freaking out at the same time. Like, what's wrong? Dosta, Jiren! Dosta Jiren! Like, and you, you see him sweating, then he's in it cocky. Like, yo, our fighter's on a whole different level. Like, <laughs> That stuff I thought was amusing. Very amusing. Finally, the biggest moments of the episode, Vegeta powering up with the final flash, and then Jiren talking about Vegeta's pride. Now, there are parallels between this and previous Dragon Ball Z scenes, where the first one is Vegeta talking to Jiren about how he won't throw away his Saiyan pride. He is who he is. He's not going to change that. And then in the midst of this speech, he says this to Jiren. <laughs> Kakarot can have his ultra instinct. That reminded me a lot of when Vegeta first got Super Saiyan, where he didn't care about attaining this new transformation, which was Super Saiyan at that point in time. And with this case, he didn't care about trying to attain ultra instinct because he is Vegeta and Goku is Goku. They're two different individuals. And I think it also plays to what we said before previously in Dragon Ball Super, where Vegeta kind of has this inferiority complex with Goku when really he shouldn't. And this is, I think, Vegeta coming to terms with that once again. Whereas, like, you know what, hold on, listen. Kakarot can do whatever he wants to do, okay? I'm my own person, I'm me, and I'm gonna beat you. I'm gonna beat you doing my own methods. And we see him charge up the final flash. And not only that, but it also plays into the upcoming episode of Dragon Ball Super, where Vegeta's going to have something that Goku does not, like Goku has something that Vegeta does not. Where Goku, he has the Kaioken Super Saiyan Blue, and Vegeta, he has awakened this higher level of Super Saiyan Blue. Which, again, I will save for my analysis of the preview of episode 123, probably tomorrow. So, Vegeta is separating from Goku. 
and I do like that. In my personal opinion, what I want to see Vegeta have was something akin to Ultra Instinct, but in the opposite direction, where instead of Ultra Instinct, it'd be more so hyper analysis, I suppose, where, where he can think about so many possibilities in like a fraction of a second and then attack or react. Because Vegeta does seem to be someone that is far more analytical when it comes to his fighting prowess. A lot of folks said that, well, actually, he'll probably learn the attack version of Ultra Instinct, which could be the case still. Because Vegeta's new form appears to be on the same tier as a Kyle Ken Super Saiyan Blue Goku. So Vegeta still has to attain something to put him on par with Goku in the terms of Ultra Instinct. But Goku himself hasn't actually mastered that form yet either. So I can't say yet if Vegeta is going to have something on par with Ultra Instinct until Goku masters the Ultra Instinct form. I hope it is something different. The attack, I guess, the quote-unquote attack Ultra Instinct form, which is basically the same thing as Ultra Instinct, but it depends on how you can sustain it easier. Where Goku has to constantly think when he's attacking, Vegeta may not have to do that. When it comes to dodging, Vegeta has to do that. He has to think, kind of, whereas Goku does not. So, it's still Ultra Instinct, but it's how it's utilized between the two characters. Now, the second parallel in the episode was when he actually fires off the Final Flash, and Belmont and the Supreme Kai Universe 11, they're shot because he's actually raising a power. Even Goku makes a comment of that. And you have Vegeta telling Jiren, like, you better not move. After everything you said, you better not move. <laughs> Bring it on. Fight me. All right. Even though he says that Vegeta is too arrogant and cocky, he does have his own pride and his own court of honor and ethics. So he takes the attack full brunt. And it would have been really cool if he had said something like, what's this? I mean, he kind of did-ish, maybe, but he did it not with words, but physically. He was like, oh, crap, because the attack kind of surprised him as to how powerful it was. So I guess it's kind of like the Cell moment with the what's this. And it kind of, and you can see how the beam is huge. It goes past the bench, and it's just a massive energy wave with lightning around it. So that attack that Vegeta did in the episode was a very beastly attack, and it was very well animated. Vegeta standing there confidently, like, yeah, he's laughing, he's excited, like, yeah, I did it. Definitely the Saiyans are the strongest race, and no, 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 no. In comes Jiren the Great. And at the end of it all, he simply says, the force of that attack wasn't half bad. Boom. Vegeta in a red energy ball, feeling the pain, feeling the power of G Red, and then falls down to the ground, practically knocked out. The episode I thought was fantastic, especially when it came to the animation, specifically the second half of that. And I love how they're putting out the budget for Vegeta, because Vegeta, he deserves said budget. Yes, he does. And there's more to come in episode 123. So, I'm going to see you guys later. Be sure to rate the video. It is not that hard to do. Especially when I know that you all have a device called Zaymouse Sue. And you use Zaymouse Sue to click, 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 rate the video, to click, 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 subscribe, to click on that bell, to join the squad, and of course, comment in the comment section down below. Peace, and have a nice goddamn day.